Hello everyone. I welcome you all to Ganesh IAS Academy. In today's session, we will be seeing Environment Based Current Affairs from February 17th to February 23rd, 2024. Let us get into the news articles one by one. The first news that we are going to discuss for today is Golden Backed Frog. What is this Golden Backed Frog that we must have to know? Why is it in the news? Let us understand. Scientists were astonished to find a mushroom growing out of the side of a frog in India, making the first known instance of such a phenomenon. So, for the first time, scientists have been astonished to find that a mushroom is growing out of the side of a frog. From the side of the frog, a mushroom is growing. Why is such a thing happening? And it is the first known instance of such a phenomenon. And it was discovered in the Western Ghats and this frog has been identified as Rao's golden backed frog and had a white colored growth which is resembling a bonnet mushroom. So it had a white colored growth from its side which is resembling a bonnet mushroom. And this Rao's intermediate golden backed frog is a species of frog that is named after its discoverer. Who is the discoverer here? It is Mr. C. R. Narayan Rao who is an Indian herpetologist who discovered this frog in the year 1937. So, this frog has been renamed, uh, I mean it has been named after the discoverer and it is en endemic to western Ghats of Karnataka and Kerala specifically above the Palghat gap. So, it is present in these areas, that is Western Ghats of Karnataka and Kerala, specifically about the Palghat Gap. What else do we have to understand about this frog? So, this is how the frog looks, okay, golden backed frog and if you could see here, there is a white colored growth and that has been identified with bonnet mushroom. Okay, so here we need to understand further more details about this frog and also about the mushroom variety that has been found and if there is such a relationship or an agreement between the frog and mushroom, what is it called? It is actually called as mutualism. So, we will be understanding the concept of mutualism and the mutualistic arrangement also. Okay, so golden backed frog, it is about the size of human thumb. So, it is very small. It is about the size of human thumb and then it is predominantly found in evergreen and semi evergreen forest in western Ghats of India. So, it is found in the western Ghats of India and these frogs prefer to reside near streams, ponds and other water bodies. Obviously, frogs prefer to live near water bodies and this also preferred to reside near streams, ponds and other water bodies where they can lay eggs and find their food. Okay, so that is the reason why such locations are preferred. Next is, they are primarily insectivorous and feed on a range of small insects and arthropods like ants, beetles and crickets. So, they are primarily insectivorous which means they consume insects as their primary food. Next is, the major threats to these frogs are habitat loss and fragmentation of habitat. Moreover, pollution of water bodies because they are preferring water bodies to live and if the water body is polluted, then obviously that will become a threat to these frogs. Okay, And then introduction of non-native species, species is also another problem, another threat that is being experienced by such frogs that is golden backed frog. Now we need to know details about the bonnet mushroom which is growing from the side of the frog. So, it is commonly found as saprotroph. So, what is saprotroph here? An organism that feeds on non-living organic matter, not living organic matter, but non-living organic matter. So, an organism that is going to feed on non-living organic matter on the rotting hood is called as saprotroph and this mushroom, bonnet mushroom is a saprotroph. And it belongs to a genus called as Mycena genus and some of these species, some of the species of this bonnet mushroom are edible whereas others are non-edible that is because of the presence of certain toxins in it. Okay, So, while others contain toxins. 
So here we need to understand the concept of mutualism because this back, I mean golden backed frog is actually in a mutualistic relationship with the bonnet mushroom. So what is mutualism? in environment. Let us understand that. It is an association between organisms of two different species in which each of the organisms benefit. So, if there is a mutually beneficial relationship is there between two organisms, two different organisms, then it is called as mutualism. And this mutualistic arrangements are most likely to develop between organisms with widely different living requirements. See, from here you can understand that bonnet mushroom and the frog are going to have different living condition, I mean living requirements. But then they are forming a mutualistic arrangement because both of them could benefit from this. Okay, so this is what you need to understand from this particular topic that is golden backed frog. The topic that we are going to discuss now is cliffside bamboo tail at Ponmudi Hills. <clears throat> what is this cliffside bamboo tail? It is actually a damsel fly. So it is this damsel fly or like a dragon fly. So it is a variety of damsel fly which is found at Ponmudi Hills. So what is the significance of this discovery and other details we must have to understand. So Yes. So, a team of researchers have recently discovered a new species of damselfly at Ponmudi Hills in Tiruvananthapuram district of Kerala. Okay. And it is named cliffside bamboo tail and it belongs to a group called as bamboo tails. So, why is it called bamboo tail? That is because of their long abdomen that resembles bamboo starch. So, if you see here, If you see here, it has a long abdomen which is going to resemble like a bamboo stalk, okay, like a bamboo stem. That is the reason why it is called as cliffside bamboo tail, okay. <coughs> so, yes, and then there are two types of bamboo tails that are available now. What are they? Cliffside bamboo tail, another is hyristica bamboo tail, okay, and of these two. Cliffside bamboo tail has been named because it lays its eggs in the moss beds over rock cliffs. Just because it is laying its eggs on the moss beds over rock cliffs, it is called as cliffside bamboo tail, whereas the same behavior is not exhibited by the hyristica bamboo tail. They lay their eggs at a different location. See here, this behavior is in contrast to this hyristica bamboo tail that lay their eggs on the surface of the roots of the riparian trees. So, this difference is there between hyristica bamboo tail and cliffside bamboo tail. Okay, so what is bamboo tail here? It is a new species of damsel fly. A question as simple as this can be asked. Okay, so what is it? It is a new species of damsel fly. Where was it found? Honmudi Hills. So, here we will be understanding the details of this cliffside bamboo tail and also Honmudi Hills in detail because whenever we study a species, we also study the geographical feature, the habitat where it is located. Okay. So, it is endemic to Western Ghats and it has been recorded only in the area between Nilgiri Hills and Sharavati Valley, which is to the north of Palgat Cap. So, it is between Nilgiri Hills and Sharavati Valley. And then the discovery is significant because for over 160 years, the genus Phyloneura was considered to be monotypic. So, here we are being introduced to a new term, a new terminology that is monotypic. What is monotypic? So, for all these years, that is for over 160 years, this genus Phyloneura to which this cliffside bamboo belongs to, it was considered to be monotypic. What is monotypic? It is a term used to describe a species that does not have any interrelated or 
sorry intra related or subspecies within the population so there are no subspecies and there are no intra related species within its population such species are called as monotypic all these days this genus that is phyloneura was considered to be monotypic but then it is not so it is based on this discovery so however this discovery has rejected the notion of phyloneura species being monotypic so it is no more monotypic because there are multiple species within the same genus okay so this is what we need to understand here in the previous slide we saw right there are two different species of bamboo tail next about ponmudi hills where this bamboo tail was found okay cliffside bamboo tail was found so ponmudi translating to golden hill or golden peak is situated in the state of kerala so where is it situated kerala one important fact next is it forms part of western ghats mountain range running parallel to arabian sea and is situated at an altitude of 1100 meters above the sea level so this is an important moreover it is an integral part of agastya malai landscape statements like these are important from your exam point of view that this particular hills ponmudi hills belong to which landscape that it belongs to agastya malai landscape and it is located at the southernmost tip of western ghats moreover the hills are renowned for its rich biodiversity and they recently became notable for the discovery of the third species of the dancer fly within its range okay so this is what we need to understand from this particular topic that is cliffside bamboo tail which is found at ponmudi hills of kerala The topic that we are going to discuss now is bull shark. What is bull shark? Why is bull shark in news? Let us understand that. Recently, the bull shark attacked a fisherman in Haitarna River in Maharashtra's Palgar district was the first sighting of the bull shark 40 km upstream in the river. So, there was a bull shark attack. Who was being attacked here? A fisherman was attacked and then this is the first sighting of this bull shark. 40 kilometers upstream in the river. Which river? Vaitarna river. So, we must have to know the details of Vaitarna river and what is bull shark. Okay. So, what is bull shark? The name bull shark comes from the shark's stocky shape, broad and flat snout and then aggressive and unpredictable behavior. Because of all these reasons, it is called as bull shark. Bull. Okay. Aggressive and unpredictable behavior broad and flat snout and then stocky shape next is it is also known as zambezi shark in africa and lake nicaragua shark in nicaragua okay so it is found in other regions also that is what we need to know here and then these are frequently spotted in tropical coastal areas worldwide including shallow waters along the coastal lines so it is found along the coastal lines especially in the tropical areas tropical coastal areas and this is how the shark look like looks like okay bull shark and it reproduces through viviparity very important to be noted what is viviparity and how is it different from oviparity viviparity is the process in which embryo develops within the mother's body leading to live births so embryo de develops within the mother's body and then a live birth is given out whereas the opposite of this that is oviparity what is oviparity eggs are laid okay laying eggs is called as oviparity and then giving birth to live births i mean giving leading to live births is called as viviparity so this exhibit th these sharks exhibit viviparity and then conservation status of this under iucn is vulnerable which is again important may be asked in the exam Next is, these bull sharks are urihaline in nature. That means they can thrive in both salt and fresh water. So, what is urihaline? Urihaline means ability to live in waters of wide range of salinity. So, wherever you come across this term, haline, then you can fix that it is something related to salinity. Okay, haline means salinity. So, urihaline means those organisms which can live in wide range of salinity whereas the opposite of urihaline is stenohaline what is stenohaline 
those organisms which are confined only to narrow range of salinity. Okay. So, there are certain organisms which will live only in salt water. There are others which will live only in fresh waters. But there are some species which will live both in fresh water and salt water like these bull sharks. So, they are urihaline. If the range is narrow, it is called as stenohaline. Okay. Next is, despite their ability to survive in freshwater habitats, they cannot be categorized as true freshwater sharks. Very important to be noted. Though they are urihaline and they can live in freshwater, they are not categorized as freshwater sharks. Next is, it is considered particularly dangerous to humans because of their large size and freshwater presence and proximity to human population. They are entering rivers. Okay. So, they are in proximity to human population and they are having freshwater presence. Thus, it is considered to be dangerous to humans and it is often considered the most dangerous shark species that is present. Okay. Now, we need to understand about the lake, about the river that is Vaitarna river in which this shark was found. Okay. A fisherman was attacked. So, it is one of the best flowing rivers in the northern Mumbai, I mean in the region north of Mumbai and south of Tapi river. Okay. And then it originates in Trimbakeshwar hills of Nashik district of Maharashtra and it receives most of its rainfall during the southwest monsoon season from the months of June to October and almost 98 percentage of the annual rainfall of the basin is received during this period that is June to October southwest monsoon season times okay and then there are certain tributaries of this river like Pinjal, Ganjai, Surya, Dharji and Tansa these are the tributaries of Vaitarna river and then the catchment area of this river basin completely lies in Thane and Nashik district of Maharashtra and it drains an area of 2019 square kilometer before it falls in the Gulf of Kambath. So, where does it end? It falls in the Gulf of Kambath and then this Baitarna is one of the most polluted rivers in India Yet another important point to be noted that it is one of the most polluted rivers in India. Next is So, this is what we need to understand from that particular topic that is bull shark. The topic that we are going to discuss now is Melgat Tiger Reserve. What is this Melgat Tiger Reserve? Where is it located and why is it in news? Let us understand all this one by one. Melgat Tiger Reserve has recently started Kula Mama volleyball tournament. What is this volleyball tournament? It is to create awareness about the significance of the protection of tigers. So, to create awareness about the importance of protecting tigers is what is the aim of this Kula Mama wild, sorry, volleyball tournament and this is done inside this tiger reserve that is Melgat Tiger Reserve. So, here we need to understand the details of this tiger reserve. Okay. So, where is it located? It is located in Amravati district of Maharashtra. Okay. Important to be noted, there is another Amravati district in Andhra Pradesh. You should not confuse that with this. Okay. So, this is Amravati district of Maharashtra and then it is located on the southern offshoot of Satpura hill range in central India. What is that southern offshoot called as? It is called as Gavilgar hills. Okay, Gavilgar Hill, important to be noted. Next is, it was established as a wildlife sanctuary in 1967 and it was declared a tiger reserve in the year 1974 and it was the first tiger reserve in Maharashtra. Okay, so statements like this are important. It is the first tiger reserve in Maharashtra. Moreover, this statement, see, it was among the first nine tiger reserves notified in 1973-74 under Project Tiger. Okay, when Project Tiger started in 1973, Nine tiger reserves were identified to be under this project tiger and this Melga tiger reserve is one among the nine. Okay. So, the name Melgat means confluence of various ghats or valleys. So, what is Melgat? It means confluence. Okay. Confluence of various ghats and valleys and it is typical from the landscape of this 
tiger reserve okay so because in this tiger reserve there are many ghats and valleys and then what is the type of vegetation that is found inside this tiger reserve so the forest type here is tropical dry deciduous forest and it is dominated by teak trees okay next rivers the river is a catchment area of five major rivers okay so i mean the reserve is the catchment area for five major reserve what are all the five major reserves it is kandu kapra sipna ghadga and dholar and all these are tributaries of river tapi also called as river tapti okay and then this tapti river and that havilgad ridge that we already saw which is a part of satpura range okay so these two form the boundaries of the reserve of this tiger reserve and then there are certain tribes who are found inside this tiger reserve like korkus which is the largest tribal community in melgat region and there are other communities including gavli community and gond tribes and several other small tribal communities are also found in this melgat region so this is what we need to understand about this tiger reserve that is melgat tiger reserve where that kula mama volleyball tournament is happening which is there to create awareness about the protection of tigers the topic that we are going to discuss now is green anaconda why is green anaconda in news let us understand that a new species of the largest anaconda has been discovered let us see a national geographic expedition in amazon led to reclassification of green anaconda into two genetically distinct species earlier this green anaconda was thought to be only one species okay that is southern green anaconda but now they have reclassified it based on the recent discovery okay so the southern green anaconda is the first species and then the next one is the newly discovered northern green anaconda so now we need to understand the details of the green anaconda which is the largest anaconda in the world okay green anaconda it is the largest snake in the world when both weight and length are considered so when we are going to consider both length and weight then these green anaconda are the largest in the world and then it can reach a length of 30 feet and weigh up to 270 sorry 227 kilograms and then they are native to south america so they belong to south america which is especially those regions which are east of andes mountains and it is found in several countries like colombia venezuela peru brazil island of trinidad and even northern paraguay in all these countries you can find these green anacondas and then they generally live in tropical rainforest and they tend to prefer shallow and slow moving waters such as streams rivers and flooded grasslands so they prefer shallow and slow moving waters and they also generally live in tropical rainforest okay so this is what we need to know what else so this is how the northern green anaconda looks like the longest or the largest anaconda that is present in the world next is these are called as constrictors these anacondas are called as constrictors so how it is different from other snakes that we need to know so what are constrictors the green anaconda is a member of a family of snakes called as constrictors and constrictors are not venomous snakes so they are not venomous snakes they do not have poison in them in them okay so they do not kill their prey by delivering venom through a bite okay rather constrictors wrap their bodies around their prey and squeeze until it stops breathing so this is the tactics that it has to kill the prey it will not be injecting venom into the prey's body okay and then the giant snake opens its mouth wide enough to swallow its victim and then this anaconda's jaws are held together by a stretchy ligaments so that they can open wide enough to swallow prey as a whole okay so if you see the size of the anaconda's 
mouth will be very small okay to be very small but then it has this stretchy ligament which is helping it to open its my uh, mouth as wide as possible okay so entire deer can be sw swallowed entire cow can be swallowed with the help of these stretchy ligament okay so that is how they feed on animals and then they are constrictors very important point to be noted next is they are well adapted to aquatic life and then their nose and eyes are located on the top of their heads to help them see and breathe while swimming inside the water okay and then these anacondas are olive green with dark oval spot along the spines and similar spots with yellow centers along their sides okay and their color and pattern provide camouflage allowing them to blend with wet dense vegetation of their habitat and its IUCN status here is least concern which means sufficient amount of population is there that is why it is placed under least concern yes The topic that we are going to discuss now is Cantor's giant soft, sorry, soft shell turtle. So, what is this Cantor's giant soft shell turtle? Let us understand why is it in the news. Recently, conservationists from University of Portsmouth uncovered the nesting site of secretive Cantor's giant soft shell turtle on the banks of Chandragiri River in Kerala. So, location is also important here. And this soft shell turtle is also known as Asian giant soft shell turtle. Okay. Generally, it is called as Cantor's giant soft shell turtle, but it is also known as Asian giant soft shell turtle and frog faced soft shell turtle because its face looks like a frog. Okay. And then they inhabit inland, slow moving freshwater rivers, lakes, streams, and estuaries. And it is found in eastern and southern parts of India, Bangladesh, Burma, Thailand, Malaysia, Laos, Cambodia, Vietnam, eastern and southern China. So, these are all the location where you can find these turtle that is giant soft shell turtle. So, this is how the turtle looks like and its, its face looks like a frog's face that is why it is also called as frog faced soft shell turtle and its shell is soft okay next it is a species known for its rarity and secretive nature so what is the secretive nature that it is exhibiting it spends most of its life buried and motionless that is why it is called as secretive okay so it spends most of its life buried under the sand and then motionless with only their eyes and mouth protruding out of the sand okay and then these turtles are primarily carnivorous. So, these are carnivore animals, especially piscivores. What is piscivore? Those animals which feed on fishes is called as piscivores. So, these turtles feed on fish, crustaceans and mollusks. And then what is its conservation status? Under IUCN, it is placed as critically endangered. Okay. And then it is placed in Appendix 2 of Sites Convention and Schedule 1 of Wildlife Protection Act of 1972. And then what are all the threats that is faced by these soft shell turtle? It is habitat destruction. One is habitat destruction and fragmentation and the other one is they are heavily harvested by the locals for their meat. Okay, So, they are being hunted for their meat. So, this is the thing that we need to understand about the soft shell turtle giant soft shell turtle that was there in news recently. So, with this we have come to end of today's session. I hope you found the session to be very useful and informative. Let us see in the next session. Thank you all.